Thank you guys all for joining us for the Domestic Supply Chain Summit here at Freight Waves and sticking with us on this Wednesday. We're going to get started here with another fireside chat, and we're talking about generative AI. And generative AI is something that has really kind of hit the industry hard, especially in the last 12 months. And we're going to talk a little bit about how relevant it is and what the future of AI could look like for us. So joining me to do that, please welcome Anoop Mohandas, who is product manager over at Crowley. And Anoop, thank you so much for being here as part of the Domestic Supply Chain Summit. Thank you, Kylie. It's a pleasure. Uh, before I get started, I just wanted to uh, say like who we are as a Crowley as a company. So we are like a 130 year old company who have been in the industry for uh, 130 years, quite a long time in the supply chain space. So predominantly, we got like five business units. We have customers both in the commercial and the government sector, three more than three billion in revenue, uh, seven thousand employees across thirty six nations. So. With being that said, we have seen that evolution of supply chain from what it was the bare basics of moving a cargo from point A to point B to what it is right now. Uh, it's like multiple models across different countries, different continents, multiple application systems, and a lot. So with the evolution of the supply chain has brought in a lot of complexity. So in order for you to com solve these complexities, you need to have this latest technologies that can certainly help you to have that advantage so that you get that whole visibility to the, your supply chain and then can solve to the problems. So when we talk about AI and its place in supply chain and supply chain data specifically, a lot of folks think about it as kind of automating backend processes, maybe automating some of your data analytics or things like that. But we can also use it on a lot of forward facing things. And that's where kind of the generative aspect comes in. Can you talk to me a little bit about what generative AI just is like as a whole perspective and then where it fits specifically into supply chain on a forward facing front? Absolutely. So you, you're you right. Like this, it's a, there's a little of misnomer over the, in the industry when we say generative AI. Because it's like we have been traditionally going with the business intelligence wherein we create the reports, we create analysis that helps the people to have insights into the business. And a little piece of the backend automation, it's there. But when you really see generative AI, it's, it's this new technology that's based on large large language models that can be trained on the data. And when I say that, how it's been traditionally different from your traditional AI, it's like traditional AI is pretty good. It can analyze patterns, it can run through predefined rules. But the difference with the generative AI, it's like it can create these patterns, it can create new data, it can create new contents, which is like quite powerful from the term like produce. So, if we if we look at the supply chain industry, if we were to integrate the uh, generative AI with the supply chain, we can solve a lot of problems. And then let me be very specific on when I say like what kind of problems it is. So data democratization, it's a big thing. We have been talking of data. We have been talking of business insights across the org for quite a while. But if you see like how the companies or the industry still works, it's like, People still live in data silos. They don't have the access to all the reports or all the insights that will help them to make data-driven decisions. They are like still doing things based on the gut-based. So when you train your generative AI LLM models on the data, it, it helps to understand and analyze the questions, whatever the user is asking. So if I were to ask a question like, what is my profit for a customer X for the month of December 23? It's gonna give me that results. If you were to ask, like, um, who, who who are my what are my lanes that are like bleeding lanes that has this loss of profit? It can go hit those data points, get you get you that information. So from a user perspective, you don't really have to know how to write a SQL. You don't really need to know how to analyze the data. You just ask the question in plain English, and then you get that answer pretty much straightforward. So data democratization, it's democratization, it's one big thing. One other thing, it's like bringing this end-to-end -end visibility. We we all know like it's a, it's still a big problem, continue to be a big problem in the industry. So uh, generative AI has this ability to um, crunch a huge volume of numbers, which means like starting from your point A to point B, with all the stakeholders, all the applications, it can crunch these numbers and then still get the insights. So any point of time you have to ask something, you can get that information right there. So 
uh, the the possibilities are endless. It's just like how do we roll it? Uh, are we uh, like do the companies have the quality of data to really uh, rent the algorithms? Things like that. That's the only thing. So that's a really great point that you bring up there is that data quality is super important when you talk about the output quality of what your AI gives you, right? If you're feeding it junk, you're going to get out junk on the opposite side. So for a lot of companies who are maybe to, looking to implement some generative AI technology, that step number one is to make sure that the data that they are gathering that they want to use to analyze is absolutely top shape. What are some like maybe minimum requirements of what would quantify good data or what would qualify good data to feed into a generative AI model? And is there something that companies that would be like kind of easy for them to track first? Or is there is there a starting place, basically? Sure. So it, it's always like uh, a lot of lot of companies go with the buzzwords. So now the buzzword is generative AI. So companies just want to build the models. And then when they try to build the models, they realize like they don't have that quality of data. So if you really peel back, um, everything starts with whatever you say, like garbage in. So whatever the users put in, um, it could be the dates. So um, it could be the, the bare basic things that people who think uh, are, uh, it's like they can tab it out or maybe put a default date, doesn't make a big difference, but it, when it rolls up, when you try to run some numbers on this data, it, it messes up the whole thing. So there is a gap between operations putting in the data and what the data or or them knowing like what the data can do for them so the first would be to have a good knowledge of like like pretty much eradicating that gap between operations of what they put in it's how important that is once that's been in place the right set of training is in place there should be data matrices that allows you to have a good check on the data you don't want to go back after one year and then see like oh man uh, the time just passed by. I want to get fix that data. It doesn't work that way. You'd have the right set of policies, practices in place so that you can continuously monitor the data and get the right set of qualities, things like that, to ensure you have the quality data to for whatever you want to do. Just example, generative AI. So obviously generative AI is pretty good for a company who's looking to maybe understand a little bit of their solo metrics. You said kind of breaking down some of those data silos that exist within your company. But what about when it comes to collaboration? And is there room in the industry? Is there maybe the future of AI looking at taking these models and really understanding how companies work from a collaborative standpoint, my data with company A versus my data with company B versus my data with company C? Absolutely. Uh, collaboration is one of the big things that can be achieved through generative AI. And uh, we know like uh, if you take a supply chain that has like a lot of stakeholders and they don't really talk to each other. Uh, so it could be the trucker, it could be the shipper, or it could be the port. And that information doesn't really pass through as you really expect it to be. So now just think of a platform wherein you come in, you ask a question that has this access to all this information. So if I were to ask a question like, where is my shipment on the road, which could be like on the road. So it just gives you that information and it could be at the port, but it still gives you that information because it has access to that particular data sets or, or it can comprehend this information and then it, it can just answer to your simple question. So generative AI, um, like it can certainly bring a lot of end-to-end -end visibility and in-transit visibility to the to the whole supply chain network. It, I mean, we're going to be seeing some good uh, trends in the coming years. So I think one of the really interesting conversations about AI just in general is kind of that it's the pace that it's moving at, right? Specifically talking here in the United States, we obviously have a lot of regulation around data safety and security and making sure that there aren't bad actors harnessing this data and utilizing it for nefarious reasons. But oftentimes we see that technology outpaces that regulation to keep it safe. Do you think that we maybe run the risk of generative AI kind of getting ahead of the people able to regulate it? And is that something that we could be looking at here down the future is maybe the U.S. government saying, okay, wait a second, we need to put some limitations on what AI can actually be used for, especially in a business setting. Uh, you're right. I mean, I think I think it's more kind of like we are still in the initial stages of this whole thing, and then we might be absolutely like if you see the whole spectrum, yeah, the 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 probability of it being used by bad actors is quite high. But if you really look at the industry, we are like still in the very early stages by running POCs, um, just still testing the waters to see like what it could be done. But I think we got to wait out to see like how this uh, whole thing pans out. 
but i don't i don't think uh, it would be an, it would be like a show stopper for the whole thing all these things are going to roll out there will be checks and balances to be sure like we have the there is data security there is the, the right people only access the right data it doesn't get spilled out things like that but i don't think that's going to stop this whole revolution when we look at the way that the US freight supply chain works in general. Where are those areas or those segments that are kind of most primed for AI to step in and have a really big impact? Is it in scheduling and processing? Is it in billing and payments? Is it in track and trace? So is there a place where AI can have kind of the most influential impact like right now? And then is there a place that we would have a really good impact with a little bit more development? Sure. So there are like certainly a lot of a lot of places where it, it can have a big impact. One, it's like your your fraud that's happening within the billing, because we we have like a huge amount of fraud that's happening within the billing because of multiple reasons. AI been uh, having the ability to crunch a lot of numbers. It can certainly go identify the patterns itself and then see like if there's any kind of a trend that needs to be tracked down and then alert the user. Or in other, uh, or so that that's one area of that it can we can focus on. One would be like a like a um, digital companion. It's so that would be the forefront of your customer service going forward. So any questions that that I mean, the customers have or the operations have, or any stakeholders within the supply chain have, your digital companion would be the new friend that be able to answer all these questions. Again, sustainability big thing. Um, so uh, companies can leverage generative AI to really optimize the routes, cut down the empty miles, um, optimize their inventory, uh, run the ships full, things like that. So it, it's more kind of like way, how you apply it. If you know the right set of problem that you target to, it's more kind of just applying the technology to get it solved. So we've got just a couple minutes left in the fireside chat, and I want to kind of round it out by talking about maybe some risks that are a little unknown for this space. Do you have anything that really concerns you about generative AI going forward, or any maybe kind of hesitations for companies who are looking to start working generative AI into their business strategy? Yep, absolutely. So anything that you you sound like uh, the first try you get, it sounds too good to be true. You got to be really watchful because. Um, uh, these these large language models can really has hallucinate, which means like they can give you things that they think it's right, but might not be accurate at all. So you got to be really uh, training your models. You got to be really testing them, validating them before you put it out to the market or put it out to the operations to be sure like you are accurate or you know like what you're really doing. Without that, I think it's gonna be uh, it's it's gonna be causing a lot of lot of um, backfiring. Um, people might be using it and then they get it wrong, which they blame it on the model. So it's always like have a set of good practices to to ensure like whatever you create out, it's been tested, validated, and then then it's ready to go with good accuracy. I think it's going to be a risk to run for sure. You always got to double check what it puts out, right? Anoop, thank you so much for joining us for today for this Domestic Supply Chain Summit. If people want to reach out to you guys at Crowley and maybe learn a little bit more about what you offer for supply chain or if they have any lingering questions about generative AI, where can they go to do that? Uh, so they can they can certainly go to the Crowley's website and then um, or, and then log for the questions or, or they can certainly reach out to me and then it's all like, I mean, we, we can like, um, help them to get all this question answered. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. And thank you guys for sticking with us here for our Domestic Supply Chain Summit at FreightWaves. Of course, plenty more content co to come throughout our day today. So make sure that you are staying active in our live chat. If you're not joining us on live.freightwaves.com, head on over and get registered. Make sure that you keep up with us there as well. And as always, all these segments from today will be live and on demand on our YouTube channel following the completion of the show. Make sure you stay tuned. We've got more coming up after this.